Hello guys, Quint Beastwood here, and um, just gonna open up to you guys and talk to you guys about how I'm feeling right now, um, you know, at this point in my career, and uh, I don't know, I feel like people like to see me be vulnerable and open up about my experience, so, you know, I want to give you guys that, because, you know, I know I got a lot of supporters, and uh, listen, dub season hats are available. We still out here to win, bro. We still working our ass off. You know, nothing changed. Um, you know, this is the season, baby. Dub season, baby. We come for that win. But um, yeah, like I haven't posted on YouTube in a year. And I figured it's fair that I come on here and I talk to you guys about, you know, my uh, New York Pro situation because, you know, I put so much into this. I wasn't doing any content creating uh, this past year because I was so focused on doing the work, you know, day in, day out. You know, I um, this was a very long and tough off season. You know, I worked, I do, I've, I've been on record for saying, I believe the off season is harder than prep. And I mean, this prep was extremely hard for me because of, I mean, it didn't feel hard because I'm one of those maniacs that tells myself, it's easy, baby. It's easy, baby. You got this, baby. Nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> you know, so I'm crazy. So I, it didn't, it didn't feel hard, but in hindsight, it, it was hard on my body, you know, high cortisol, you know, like, um, I just couldn't like, we, we burned through a lot of muscle. So in that sense, it was hard, but, uh, I'm still proud of myself for being able to like do that, you know, cause obviously working with a new coach, you know, I showed him that I'm willing to do whatever. And I never made a complaint or anything. Um, the thing is, you know, I'm not somebody that points fingers, you know, I've been here before, um, with previous coaches and the thing is like sometimes shit happens you know for me I think about personal accountability and personal accountability for me is like what could I have done to prevent this and for me it's like maybe I could have said something in those moments but again my maniac mindset was like hell yeah I heard Heidi was doing three hours if he doing three hours I could do three hours you know so it's like my mindset was like not helping. I was like, let's do this. Let's do more. Like I'm ready to do more, you know? So um, realistically, I've done I've done hard preps. Like, you know, we tried to make classic, me and Dorian Hamilton back in 2019. Uh, we were, so we were prepping for the open Toronto Pro Show in 2019. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry you got to hear that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we were prepping and we looked fantastic. We looked fantastic. If I was one of those internet gizmos, I put up pictures so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But we looked fantastic. We looked super good going to that show. And uh, we, he realized I'm not too far away from the classic cutoff, so we tried. And what happened was my conditioning actually got worse. I looked softer and my muscle, all my pop went away. So that's happened before. And every time I flatten out too much, I think for the Romania show, I was turning down refeeds because um, I did the New York Pro. Listen, I'm not going to get into all, all these details. I guess it's too much. You guys don't really care about that. But anyways, I've, I've been through, I've been here before. Like I should have been vocal and I should have been, you know, open about the fact that this kind of approach usually doesn't work for my physique. But, you know, new coach and I wanted to prove myself, you know, yes, he's, he's worked with some of the best athletes in the world. And I just didn't want to come off as a pussy or anything of that sort. Sorry, my dad watches my YouTube. I'm going to try not to swear. So anyways, you know, I, um, I blame myself because, you know, I do think there's things that I could have done, things I could have said. Now, that being said, um, I'm embarrassed, you know. I think it was still a good look. I think I, especially in the night show, it was a good-looking physique. I think I have a good physique. But it's it's not what I worked on, man. It's not what I worked towards, you know. I worked so hard to to be the best, man. I worked so hard to come and improve. And I feel like in my career, there's always been these labels of potential. And, you know, I was finally starting to see what I needed to see to be to come into my own, to, uh, to be who I know that I am. And, um, yeah, it was kind of ruined. It was kind of ruined. So, um, shit, it is what it is. You know, it's definitely life. And at this point, you just got to kind of take situations and you have to learn from them. You have to take the, you know, the rainy days and you just got to wait for the flowers to come, you know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, you know, definitely sucked i mean it was really embarrassing because i held myself to a high standard 
And, you know, I had people picking me to fucking win the show. And it was fucking six, bro. It was fucking embarrassing, man. Um, I mean, you listen, I got uh, destroyed online. And I, I think it's fair. I think it's fair. Like, I think it's totally just because what I brought was just so beneath what is acceptable of somebody of my caliber. So, you know, I'm okay with the criticisms. I mean, yeah, sometimes it bothers me. It pisses me off. But it's a part of the game, you know. If you can't handle the heat, get the fuck out the kitchen. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm a big boy. I'm tough. You know, I'm a dog, baby. And when that shit come at me, you know, just we dog it out, bro. We dog it out. You know, we've got a different approach. So, you know, as I said, man, I'm coming hard, bro. I'm coming crazy. You know, I'm coming crazy for this one. And the blessing is, like, one, I think I proved my work ethic. I think I proved to my coach that I'm willing to do whatever to win. Uh, two, now we know that doesn't work. So now I don't have to do all that crazy cardio. So the blessing now is I feel so good because my knees feel good and I'm not constantly super depleted. I also feel very good because my workouts are great. So I'm enjoying my training. Whereas before it was like, you know, you're so depleted. And my mindset was like, I was telling myself that I enjoyed it and that it was good. And that was, I was writing on all my workouts and I was at least trying to match what I did the weeks before. And, uh, you know, I'd fall short at times because I was just so depleted, but I wasn't far off. I wasn't far off. My performance wasn't getting, like, drastically worse. Uh, sometimes, there were some weeks that actually got better. So, you know, there was definitely some, you know, I, I, I really like progressive overload. It was really good for me. Um, yeah, anyways, so at this point, we're about nine, shoot, we're like, I, I dropped weight, actually. We're like seven, eight pounds over the stage weight of New York, and, um, yeah, I think we can definitely come in with a physique that's a lot fuller for the Toronto Pro. So that's what we're aiming towards, and that's what we're working towards. That's what I'm training hard for. Um, listen, like my weight at the New York was too similar to the weight of the show I did two years ago. And, um, yeah, it's a shame. But another thing is from going through that and going through that hard prep, now... The prep feels so easy. Like, it's so much more enjoyable. I have so much more energy. Uh, I feel like I... Not I feel like I... I'm actually burning more calories on 30 minutes of cardio than I was for, like, basically two hours. Just because I had nothing in me, you know? So, my productivity is better. Um, everything just feels good, man. But, you know, sometimes in life you're going to fall. You know, sometimes you're going to fall. Sometimes shit doesn't go your way. But, you know, it's a matter of what happens when you do fall like what do you do when you do fall down you know do you kick and scream do you cry about it uh do you get up and fight you know if i get hit you know shit, i'm start bobbing and weaving bro start bobbing and weaving and working on that counterpunch bro i'm gonna I'm hit you back bro i'm gonna knock you out you know what i'm saying so that's the kind of energy that i got you know we're just coming we're coming hard bro coming with a game plan and we're we're gonna take everybody out so you know nothing changed i'm just as confident, if not more confident than before. And uh, we have some new data to work with. So, uh, you know, I mean, it definitely is a loss. You know, some people are like, it wasn't a loss, it's a lesson. Listen, it was a fucking L, baby. Sorry, it was a damn L. It was an L, but it was also a lesson. So, you know, we learn from this and we get better from this and we come back stronger and better than ever, baby. So I just want you guys to know where my head is at, where my heart is at. You know, I love bodybuilding. I've been committed to bodybuilding since I was like a kid. And, um, you know, I, I just don't happen to have an easy path to success here. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. You know, I like to work hard and I'm going to make sure I get what's mine. You know, I'll make sure I'm going to get what I know that I could get. You know what I mean? And, um, for the fans that I let down, that's going to change. And it doesn't really matter. I mean, I do care about my fans. But what matters most is the fact that I was a letdown to myself. So this is my chance to redeem myself in the eyes of my fans, the public, the critics, the haters. But uh, myself, mainly. If I didn't already say myself, did I? I don't know. But anyways, guys, uh, thank you for watching the video. I guess now with this video, I'm officially back on the YouTube. So, yeah, your boy's back, man. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do next, but I'm going to see y'all in the next one. All right.